Did you ever try to have intercourse? Uh-huh. What happened? I, I actually had always thought we eventually would. I mean, there, was, there really was never a question for me. I think um, most normal people would think, well, sure, you're going to have an affair, you're, you're going to make love, and, and it's going to be great, or you hope it's great. Um, but we, when we, we first spoke about it, um, actually it was during the election, and um, he said, I can't do that. And I said, what do you mean you can't do that? And he said, well, when you get to be my age, you'll understand there are consequences for those kinds of things. And I got really upset because, to me, that completes a relationship. I felt it was unfair to me, having been in this relationship and having been a part of this, that I would never know what it was like to be that intimate with him. But I don't think we ever tried. I think I tried to get him to want to have sex with me. Okay, but it never actually no. happened. In December of 1997, more than eight months after the end of your physical relationship with Bill Clinton, Paula Jones' attorneys named you as a potential witness in their civil suit against the president. The president called to tell you this in at about 2 o'clock in the morning. He often called you late at night. Were you frightened? Terribly. Terribly. Were you amazed? Yes, I was astounded. I mean, this was, uh, this really was the beginning of the nightmare. But the nightmare would only get worse, as Monica found herself facing threats of prison with what seemed to her no way out. I have never been so afraid my entire life. As her romance fell apart, Monica at first thought she could control events. There was a devious game of hide-and-seek with gifts that the president had given Monica and that had been subpoenaed by Paula Jones's lawyers. Most of those gifts wound up under the bed of the president's secretary, Betty Curry. Curry's story and Lewinsky's differ as to whose idea that was. And then there was Linda Tripp. When she said she would tell the truth about Lewinsky's affair if asked by lawyers for Paula Jones, Monica panicked. She begged Tripp to conceal the relationship, even offering her mother's vacation home to Tripp as an inducement to lie. And Monica later gave Tripp three pages of notes, the so-called talking points, to use as possible guidelines for Tripp's affidavit. Let's talk about those infamous talking points. Now, Linda Tripp says that she believes that the notion that you wrote those on your own is about as likely as you co-authoring the Gettysburg Address with Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Now, you testified that you wrote these yourself. Mm -hmm. So her question is, and the question of other people is, how are you able to use those legal terms? I mean, you're not that informed. You're not that smart. Did anyone help you with these talking points? No. I had been working on my own affidavit with my attorney at the time. Um, I've been told by the prosecutors and by my own attorneys I should go to law school. Uh, I guess I have a knack for it. I sat down at the computer and I typed it out. You finally did file a false affidavit saying that you did not have a sexual relationship with the president. Did you know that you were committing perjury? No, I think I knew I was lying, but I had no knowledge, I mean, I had no idea what all the different elements of perjury were at the time. Were you trying to protect the president? I was trying to protect myself and the president, and my family. The president never told you to lie. No. But he also never told you to tell the truth. Correct. You told Linda Tripp that one of the main reasons that you were going to uh, deny the sexual relationship in your affidavit was for fear of your life. You said, I would not cross those people for fear of my life. Who were those people and what did you think they would do? That was not a very truthful statement um, that I made to her at that, at that time on the tapes. I think I was trying to uh, trying to get Linda to keep my secret and trying to use anything and anybody that would do that. So whether it was my mom, whether it was Mr. Jordan, whether it was something the president said, whether it was fear, whatever it was that I could do, whether it was a condo in Australia, 
I didn't want her to tell my secret. Linda Tripp recently said that you passed on White House threats to her. Did you do that? No. January 16th, 1998. Linda Tripp asked you to meet her at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel near the Pentagon. There you were confronted not only by Linda Tripp, but by members of Ken Starr's staff and by FBI agents. What happened that day? My attorneys have agreed with the Office of the Independent Counsel that I would not discuss the details of that day in this interview. Due to her unusual immunity agreement with Ken Starr, Monica is not allowed to discuss that day with members of the news media, which includes me. But her lawyers interpreted the immunity agreement in such a way that she was able to tell British author Andrew Morton about it. And it is described in vivid detail in his book. Two armed FBI agents led Monica to room 1012 in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, where there were six members of Ken Starr's staff waiting for her. For hours on end, they threw questions at her. Monica was threatened with 27 years in prison for perjury, witness tampering, and obstruction of justice. But even worse for Monica, she says, the prosecutors also threatened her mother with criminal charges because of statements Monica had made on the Linda Tripp tapes. Those statements, if true, might have implicated her mother in the obstruction of justice. But the prosecutors promised Lewinsky immunity then and there if she told them everything and wore a wire to record conversations with Vernon Jordan, Betty Curry, and possibly even the president. The confrontation, according to the book, was at times tense and ugly. Monica describes one prosecutor as a revolting specimen of humanity, another as a pit bull who mocked her when she asked to call her mother. And when she wanted to call her lawyer, prosecutors discouraged her. After 12 hours resisting the demands of prosecutors, Monica's family hired attorney Bill Ginsburg, and Monica finally went home. You learned that day that Linda Tripp had taped your conversation. You didn't know then that she had taped other things. But how did you feel when you learned for the first time that she taped you? Gutted and violated and betrayed and scared. I understand that you're restricted in the events of those days and what happened when you were in the room with Ken Starr's people and the FBI agents. But you can tell us how you were feeling. How did you feel that day? What were your emotions? Oh, I was, I was petrified. I was... I have never been so afraid in my entire life. I, I, I wanted to die. I wanted to kill everybody in the room. <laughs> I, um, I was just very, very scared. As we talk now, today, is there anything you're afraid of? I'm afraid of doing something to lose my immunity. And, um, being prosecuted or, or having my family prosecuted. You mean you still think you could go to jail? I learned things this past year and saw things this past year that I didn't know happened in this country. And, yes, I worry about that. Have you ever met Ken Starr? Have you ever talked to Ken Starr? No. What do you think of Ken Starr? Mm. We're not talking about what happened that day. We're talking about your feelings. I'm too afraid to answer that. I'm sorry. Monica's fears only intensified. Ken Starr's prosecutors surrounded her, and when her story became known, the media besieged her, and she seriously considered suicide.
find the name Monica Lewinsky. There's a person and there is a family. <laughs> We now turn to the bleakest and most desperate months for Monica Lewinsky. Every detail of her life became public knowledge. She didn't have immunity from prosecution, and her lawyer, Bill Ginsburg, she says, was failing her. And worst of all, the president was denying that he'd had any relations with her. He almost seemed not to know her name. But at the beginning, her greatest fear was what Ken Starr's prosecutors might do to her and to the president. After this session with the prosecutors and the FBI, you and your mother went back to her apartment at the Watergate. Tell me about that night. We were manic. And we were so afraid that any minute we were going to be arrested and not knowing for me, I was constantly thinking at that point, how am I going to protect the president? How am I going to let him know? How is he going to be helped? And I, I knew he was going to do the deposition the next day, and I was racking my brains trying to think of anything. Could I get in a taxi and go to Betty Curry's house? Could I, could I, could I call Bruce Lindsay, whom I had never met or spoken to? Who could I call? What could I do? Could I go stand outside where, the, where he was going to do the deposition and hold a sign? Don't do it. Uh, if anything. What did you do? I, that night, I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't put myself or my mother in that jeopardy. Did you think of running away? Mm -hmm. We figured that the um, that all the airports would be staked out, and that, um, that it's my um, my mom lay awake all night watching me sleep, and made me take a shower with the door open. And, um, because? Because she didn't want me to hurt myself. She was afraid you might do yourself harm, kill yourself? That bad. I felt very responsible. Responsible for what? for everything that was going to happen and that had happened and I didn't want him to get into trouble. You were worried about Bill Clinton? More than about yourself? More than about your mother? No. I was worried about my mom more than I was worried about the president and then I was worried about the president and then I was worried about myself. And then five days later, the story broke. Everyone in the country now knew Monica Lewinsky. <sighs> Unfortunately. Did Betty coach the president? Hey, hey pal, get your arms off her. I don't even know how to begin to describe what it was, but it was to see my face on TV, to, to, read my name in the newspaper to see and and know that people are learning about my little relationship my private relationship and that there were all these people that i cared about were going to be in trouble you've told friends that at one time or another your mother and your father because of things that were Reveal the most personal things about them that each of them considered taking their own lives. It was that bad. They did. People have no idea what what this has done. What this has done that that behind. 
the name Monica Lewinsky, there's a person and there is a family and there has been so much pain that has been caused by all this and it is